you're finally looking to go and get an electric car, well, Hyundai has something for you, and it's the Ionic 5. Have a Tesla killer on our hands, or that's what Hyundai hopes they can have with the Ionic 5. And a fully electric Hyundai. I'm really excited to try this out and take it for a ride in this first ride and review. In this beautiful gray, and you have these LED lights in the front, this pixelated kind of theme that they were going for, really modern. You can see that here. I think they went ahead and hit it out of the park with this design. You know, in a previous video, I went ahead and reviewed the 2021 Hyundai Elantra, and I thought a lot of the design things that they were doing there definitely were, you know, out of the scope of Hyundai, but I think they took it all to the next level when it came in this beautiful package. So here you can see you have a little bit of that Minecraft kind of a look here with the LED cubes. I hope one of these cubes don't go out or my OCD will forever be there. So I like this. I really like the styling here, especially on the front. We come around, you can see the lines are very you know, accentuated across the hood. Coming in here, you have the huge crease line down the side. You also have some more of this, you know, the plastics here at the bottom. It is in cold Canadian winter today, and that's where we're gonna be or so. And we thought that car was really good. You come around here, we're gonna be comparing it with that car. And you can see the Onyx 5. Again, these LED lights, a lot of people have been liking that. I think it looks really nice. Again, really hard to kind of get into a theme of being futuristic, but not looking like it's a little bit weird. It almost reminds me of a DeLorean. Almost reminds me of actually one of the early concept cars from the Audi R8. So I think this looks really, really good. We come across, this is the preferred version of the car. So I'll talk about that. This doesn't have all of the features that you would expect, but this is in the preferred model range. And I'll talk a little bit about pricing and what you can expect by getting a model or a package like this. I actually prefer the additional package, and this is the rear wheel where they have the bigger wheels, but that's okay. We can talk about it here with this car. The first thing that I do wanna say, wrapping up the exterior, the paint options aren't all the greatest. I think they're more on the bland or futuristic side. I like the white. I think the white looks really good, and I like this gray. So both of these color options I think are really, really nice. Let's go ahead and talk about a little bit of the packaging and the storing in the car. So let's go ahead. We're in the Ionic 5 and listen, this is the preferred package. It's a little bit more pedestrian with the cloth seats. It doesn't have all the upgraded packages like the beautiful full glass moonroof that they have on the greater packages, but there's a lot of space in here. I, that's the number one thing right away I notice when getting in this car. Lots of space, great visibility from the windshield. And right away you think, where's the Hyundai badge off of this? But there's nothing here, just these four little cubes, these dots on the steering wheel, which by the way, I really like the steering wheel. It's a sporty steering wheel with a flat bottom. I like this a lot, it has all your controls. This reminds me a little bit of the Audi R8, uh, the steering wheel that they have here with this drive mode lever. But I think this looks really nice. So right off the bat, you have these two beautiful displays, one with your driver information and your cluster, and here where you can get all the information and really access all the functionality of the car. So you have your EV performance, you know, how much battery do you have left? You know, what range do you have left on the car? You go back, you'll see your map. So typically people are gonna be driving around with the map open and your instrument cluster on the left-hand side. Get back out of here. Navigation, your phone, um, you have your climate controls, your, you know, your warmers, your quiet mode, you have all of this stuff in the display. Now what I like that they did, they have all the buttons and physical touch buttons here for your main buttons that you wanna use. So, you know, your volume up and down, your tuning button. You have a bunch of these buttons here, which are flanked by, you know, touch buttons as well. And the EV start and stop button is just here on the left-hand side. Now, the one thing that some others are gonna be looking at and saying, this is a little weird, the stock to change the gear shifter. If you've driven an older automatic car, they used to do this, okay? I don't think that that's weird at all, to be honest with you. Yes, it opens up space here, which I think you can use for storage. I don't mind the stock being here at all. So I don't know why people are complaining about that, to be honest with you. It's just going back to, it almost is like fashion and style. It gets recycled. So now we have it back in the stock for electric vehicles. But yes, you do have a lot of space here, a lot of leg room, a lot of head space. And I'm about 5'9", so I'm not the tallest guy in the world, but a lot of head space here. You have fully adjustable seating. So I can go ahead and adjust this, all of this storage here. So in here you have the storage compartments you can also open this up for additional storage you have your cup holders here as well and i like the fact that you can kind of just slide away here 
into the passenger seat if you really want to and get all that capacity and storage. Huge glove box here. So another big glove box that you have access to on the passenger side. And then you can see the vents are here. The vents flank all the way down across to the driver's side. I think this is really nice. I think for the preferred package for this price, I think you have a great car with the range that will last you. And so range is a big thing, especially in these cold Canadian climates. So we're gonna take this out for a drive, see how it does. But typically, and this is based on my friend's experience with his Tesla Model 3 long range, he loses about 30% of his battery capacity. So you have to be mindful about that when you're taking this car out. Let's go in the back seat before we talk about more of the electronics. It's pretty roomy here. So I'm not the tallest guy in the world. I'm again, 5'9", but this has a lot more space than my 2009 Lexus IS 250. A um, lot of great space here. The great thing is, look, I can bring this up and I can recline this seat if I wanted to as well. So you can go ahead, recline and bring the seat back. Look at this. I'm basically at a massage parlor at this point. I just need someone here massaging my arms and my legs for me. But this is really cool. Again, as well, go ahead. You have your cup holders here. This is, again, the preferred version of the car. Bring this back. Um, and these seats also fold. So we'll talk about the storage in a second, but um, a lot of space here. The great thing about the Ionic, USB ports everywhere. There's two USB ports here, tons of USB ports in the front. So you just have a whole bunch of USB ports and connectivity to the car. I also like the fact that, yes, air vents are back here for the passenger. They're not here on a lot of cars. They're right here on the main console. They actually put them on the sides, on the pillars of the car, which I like. But this is really roomy. And look at all this headroom. Look at this. This is, uh, you know, in my IS250, again, it makes me feel so tall. But here I just feel like a midget, which is a great thing for a car like this. I think storage and capacity is an important thing for a daily driver. For me, I am actually looking at getting this car to replace the Lexus. So this is not just a review, it's my own personal evaluation. I think this is a pretty comfy backseat. All right, let's go to the trunk. All right, the Ionic has a big enough booty for me. I'm not a person that needs a big booty to be honest with you. So let's open this up and you can see again, what I like about cars that are like this, huge opening. So you have those larger, you know, things that you're buying from wherever. They don't fit in the small, tiny booty of your car. You could have a big area to have storage, but you can't get those bigger items in. Look at this. This is nice and big. These also fold down, which is great, giving you so much room and capacity. Again, I think this has a lot of storage. You have some extra space here. You're typically your charging cables and everything are gonna be here, but, uh, Lots of great storage, lots of great space back here. 